Pelicans and Thunder last night littered with great performances. Let's start with Anthony Davis. He continued his dominance, becoming the first player over the last 10 seasons with 40 points, 10 rebounds, and a game-winning buzzer beater. Russell Westbrook has put up 45 points in back-to-back -back games now, becoming the fourth player in NBA history with 45 points, five rebounds, and five assists in consecutive contests. How about the others? Kobe Bryant, Wilt Chamberlain, and Elgin Baylor. Good company there. And Pelicans guard Tyreek Evans, he had himself a night as well, posting his third career triple-double, making this the fifth non-overtime game in NBA history, featuring a player with a triple-double and two other players with a double-double team in the league. Well, for the last two seasons, these guys were the last two standing. For the last three seasons, the Larry O'Brien Trophy has called either San Antonio or Miami home. But when the two teams met last night, temper yeah. the title talk. Because you've got a reigning champ that's sitting seventh in the standings. You've got a LeBron-less Miami team who wouldn't even be in the playoffs if they were starting today. Last night, the Heat's leading scorer was a guy on a 10-gay contract. Seriously. <laughs> and in recent weeks, the savior who took his talents to South Beach is some dude named Hassan White. On your birthday, all alone. All alone Seattle. in Seattle doing a story with a fan who actually, Norb sent me, if people remember this story, sent me a link to his reaction to the Super Bowl, which I haven't watched yet, but I want to see now. It might break the internet. It might. Uh, with that, we say welcome into a new sports. And that's a good tease. Can you get Norb's video up for the end of the show? Fine. Uh, with Bram Weinstein, I'm Sarah Walsh. The Gator faithful, they are out in full force in Gainesville today. They're hoping to cheer Florida on to what would be the biggest upset of the year against number one Kentucky. Where's the Sharks? I, well, shark I saw the sign that said a Kentucky prefers white shark, mm -hmm. which you explained to me was a really nasty jab at them. College game day there for the SEC showdown. I wasn't following. A jab that. at the Sharks? I didn't know it was jab at Kentucky because okay. they like the one who's going like this the whole time, right? Right? Nine Eastern at the swap. But Dude, you don't. Well, that's what he did, right? right? That's what he did, right? You don't have to wait until then for some. The season's over. The front offices, they really go to work right now. They've got the draft. They've got free agent board. So we want to take the Broncos situation in particular, several key free agents, and then you got the pending Peyton Manning situation. Take us through how you would stack the board if this was your team. Yeah, what you did is you took your own football team and you decided, okay, you had to break them out in tiers. We did five tiers here. And what the numbers are over here is going to be the average per year of their contract. So let's say a guy signs a five-year deal for $40 million. He's getting $8 million per year. So you'd stack it. So tier one, when you look at the Denver Broncos, are the top two players, obviously. Demarius Thomas and Julius Thomas, you're thinking. And, sports. But he's going he's gonna to be in that ring. And then you've got your tier five guys. Now, these guys are still important. That's how you fill out your roster. But these guys are the ones that are going to get minimum salary to around $2 million in an average per year contract. Tammy, Montgomery, Carter, I think that's where they range. And you got to try to figure this all out while you're not only getting up to free agency, but before you get to the combine. That's, 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 that's Palm Beach. That's where the money is. Mm -hmm. And so we just called them Palm Beach. So we'd get done with the conversation. And we'd say, okay, well, how did it go with Gerald McCoy's agent? Well, you know, that was a Palm Beach kind of conversation. And my cap guy goes, oh, okay, because maybe we weren't able to be at the same meeting. And he goes, that's Palm Beach money. And no one else knew what the heck you're talking about. Roughly a 180-mile drive from Fort Wayne, Indiana, where Austin Hatch grew up to Bloomington, where his Michigan Wolverines are going to visit the Hoosiers later this afternoon. The road to any collegiate stop for Hatch cannot really be measured in miles, but in perseverance and heart. Because how do you measure wins and losses? You have to wonder how Austin measures trips now, long or short, how he views what might be a simple hop, skip, and a jump to a destination. It will not be the way you or I view it. Austin Hatch is either the luckiest or unluckiest athlete on earth. It depends on your perspective. Whatever that is, you will certainly agree his story is nothing short. No, he's not judged just by his wins, and certainly there's the honors and the accolades, but among the other things that he's accomplished, he won a Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian honor you can achieve. He was Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year back in 1997, won the Arthur Ashe Award at the ESPYs. So this is someone that, again, has not just been measured in wins and losses and Final Four appearances and championships, which he had all those. He's in five Hall of Fames. I think if there was another one to put him in, he'd probably be in that too. But I counted five. And in the Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame, he went in the inaugural class with these names. James Naismith, Oscar Robertson, Bill Russell, and John Wooden. That's who he is with. That's who he is among.